Hey guys, Jim here from Jacob Bear Play a Game. It has been a long time since I've played a racing game not named Mario Kart that I really enjoyed. So I figured, let's change that today. And take a look at Horizon Chase Turbo on the Nintendo Switch. Before I get started with the review, I just want to say thanks to the developers for sending us a free press code. I don't know if that'll change your thoughts on this review, but just letting you guys know. Released in 2018, this was developed and published by Aquirus? Aquirius? Not sure how to say this, but I'll go with Aquirus Game Studio. It came out on the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, the Nintendo Switch, Windows, Linux, and Mac. It's also available on the Steam Store, so there you go. This is a love letter to the 80s era of racing games, so if you miss a good old-fashioned simple arcade racer, this just might be the game for you. Graphically, the game actually has that great balance of pretty visuals, but also really simple. The car models themselves look good, and they're based around real cars. Now, I'm not much of a car, so I couldn't tell you which ones they are, but you go run the gamut from jalopies to basically full high-end racing cars, so you have options here. The backgrounds are very simple, but they do a good job of representing the cities and countries in which they take place. Everything moves at a blistering 60 frames per second, which I couldn't record using my capture device, but it is silky smooth and only you have the occasional little hiccup here and there visually, but it's happened so infrequently, it's not gonna take away from the game at all. You have different objects which can get in your way on the side of the road, and these are actually pretty simple polygonal models with almost no texturing sometimes, but you really don't need it. It gets the job done and everything flies by so fast that you're not gonna really care either. When it comes to sound, it's pretty good. It's personally not my favorite kind of genre, it's that typical kind of electronic, techno-ish, almost EDM kind of sound, which it's really well made and you get a bunch of different tracks, but yeah, it's not for me personally. It sounds like that kind of stuff that a streamer will have in between game sessions. For what it is, it's perfectly fine and it gets the job done, and it's the perfect accompaniment to this kind of game. Sound effects are mostly simple, but they don't really have to be anything that special. For what they are, they get the job done. The cars, for the most part, sound the same, of course, the more high-end cars will have a lot more oomph to them than the lower-end cars, that kind of deal. What you get, it gets the job done. When it comes to control, they did a really good job of not complicating it, but using the entire controller of the Nintendo Switch. You can either use the A button or one of the trigger buttons to accelerate. You can use the B button or one of the trigger buttons to brake. You can use the Y and X buttons to use your Nitro, or even the L bumper. If you want to honk, which does nothing, you can push in the control stick. It's super simple, but it's really effective. It doesn't get in the way, you're not worried about overly complex drifting controls and stuff like that. It's really just pick it up and go. Personally, maybe I would have liked to have seen a little bit of a drift option, but I don't know, for what the game is, it doesn't really need it. Now on to the gameplay. This game really does harken back to the days of games like OutRun and Top Gear on the Super NES. You get a bunch of different game modes, so you get World Tour, which is going to be where you're going to spend most of your time, which is essentially the story mode. You go from country to country, city to city, going in a ton of different races. Every country puts you in three different cities and also gives you a challenge race, and each of the three cities can have between two to three races within it. So with the 12 countries you're going to visit, you have over 100 some races, which is a ton of content. The races, for the most part, don't take all that long, but as you go further and further into the game, they progressively get longer. So the first couple races will take you maybe a minute and a half, where by the time you get to the halfway point, you'll be up to three, four minutes, and some longer ones can go even up from there. You can get different items throughout the races, including coins, which gives you more points at the end and gives you a super trophy, depending on where you place. These po coins will go towards your overall points, along with how many gas things you pick up. You have to worry about your gas without going into a pit area, you can just keep racing and make sure you hit those items. All these items together collected go towards your trophies in the top, which you use to unlock new cars, new races, new challenge modes, and new countries and to progress the story. With every country's upgrade race, these upgrades apply to your cars throughout the entire rest of your playthrough. As you go along from world to world, you are just beefing up your cars like crazy, and you have different options each time. You always get sets of two, so you can do nitro and acceleration, or speed and fuel. It's just a way for you to really customize to your specific strengths and gameplay. 
Or if you have a favorite car, you can just boost up the things that are it's the weakest with. I've put a little under four hours into the game so far, and I'm about 33% done. If you extrapolate that and just assume you're gonna have to redo races later on, you'll probably get a good 10 to 12 hours of gameplay out of this at a minimum. That's a ton of content for 20 bucks. To win the races, it's simple. You just have to get in either first, second, or third. If you get in fourth or you run out of fuel, you lose and you gotta play it again. Besides World Tour, you get tournament modes, which gives you a series of four races and you just keep racing to try to beat everyone else and to place the highest. Think almost like the point system in Mario Kart. Throughout these races, you can have special tournament chips throughout the map, just like the coins in the World Tour mode. You have three difficulty levels, Amateur, Professional, and Master. I can tell you from experience that even Professional can get pretty challenging. Getting your way to Master, good luck with that. Outside of that is an exclusive mode to both the Xbox One and the Switch, but eventually it'll be coming out on all the other modes as well called Playground. So this is a seasonal kind of extra content for the game where they give you these races with all this different content like super slippery stuff or extreme weather effects or no fuel pickups and you have to use cars with limited fuel as it is or no items, no other races. It's just they throw a whole ton of different stuff at you to keep the gameplay fresh once you get sick of the World Tour mode or you finish everything. There's also the Endurance mode, which gives you only one car to choose and without upgrades, but you can eventually get some more. Depending on the skill level, you can have short, medium, and long races, and you have to go through like a hundred some friggin' races. So it really is an endurance for you to try and basically have a car, master it, and just try and get through progressively longer and harder races. So again, it's kind of like World Tour mode, just a lot more streamlined. It gives you less to work with and less options. I will say that I didn't unlock this mode yet. I had to look up some videos and research on this part for Endurance mode, but it seems like a pretty cool thing and I can't wait to get to it. When it comes to performance, I'm happy to say that the game actually runs pretty damn well. I only had maybe two little graphical hiccups where for the tiniest, not even a split second, it looked like the game was gonna freeze a little bit, but then it just kept going. I did have one time where the game froze and crashed on me. That is annoying, but I'm kind of a little bit more lenient with independent games like this. For the time I put into it, I was pretty happy with the performance overall. When it comes to originality, I can't really think of that much because, like I said, it's a love letter to an era of racing games past. It just takes everything from all those old games and mushes them together and it really just makes something fun and in this day and age it's unique. So the originality comes from just how simple and fun of a racing game it is for today's kind of audience. Also, some of the different little things that they'll do with the playground mode, that's kind of different as well, so I'll give it slight points there. It's not the most original game in the world, but it's not meant to be. When it comes to replayability though, you have replayability out the ass. The only way you would have infinite replayability would be with online multiplayer, but you have couch co-op. You have the three different main game modes. You have the hundreds of races in each mode, so you're really not gonna go wrong here. And plus, like I said with the playground mode, you're gonna continually get new and different races to play around with, so there you go. You're gonna get your money's worth out of this game. When it comes to beer, the races don't take a long time, but as you're racing, you're not gonna be able to put your controller down. You're gonna want something that'll sit on your tongue a little bit and give you some good alcohol without getting you too crazy drunk. Let's keep it nice and simple with the old school stout for an old school game and go with Guinness. It's a tasty beer, the flavor sticks on your tongue, and the alcohol isn't bad either, but it isn't extreme. It'll take you a long time before you get too drunk to continue playing. You'll probably get full before you get hammered. The rich, smooth texture and taste will stick on your tongue and your mouth, even through a couple races. It's not one that you have to really, you know, sit there and take little sips with. You can do full mouthfuls, but you'll still be able to enjoy tons of races even with one can. So at the end of the day, do I enjoy this game? Yeah, I do a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's simple. It's kind of bare bones, even though you get a lot of content. And it just gives you some solid old school arcade racing action. I will say 20 bucks is normally the high end of what I would go for for an independently made game. But for what it is, it might be worth it to you if you're fans of old school games like Top Gear, or Outrun, or Chase HQ, or stuff, all kinds of old school arcade games like that. It's just, it's short, well it's not short, but it's simple, and it's fun. As far as my nitpicks go, I really do wish there was some online play. I think if there was that in there, it would be a must buy at 20 bucks. but 
for what it is now and if it seems like it appeals to you, give it a shot. If you're not a fan of old school arcade racers, probably not the game for you. I'm glad I was given a chance to play it, so it made a believer out of me. If you have any interest at all but you're still on defense, just wait for a sale and give it a shot then. I still recommend it even if 20 bucks seems a little high to you. That'll do it for this video, guys. As always, if you enjoyed it, give it a like. Leave a comment below if this is the type of game that interests you. And if you haven't yet, maybe subscribe. It'll help the page and you can check out all of our video game reviews, hardware reviews, and we are the home of the Power Hour podcast. Till next time, guys. Cheers.